Hey travelers, I'm Dromps. And I'm Moots. And today the SILF team gets to unveil some information that we've been excited to share for a very long time. So the SILF research team was comprised of over 300 Pokemon Go field testers, and each of them was outfitted with the SILF web app. The web app enabled field testers to record a bunch of real-time sensor data as a Pokemon spawn occurred. It recorded everything from temperature, wind speed, daylight remaining, to the terrain, and even specifics about the Pokemon itself, like its CP and move sets. We even recorded crazy stuff like the moon phase, just to see if it had any correlation. And then, the SILF data science team took over 15,000 sighting reports and ran an analysis against them to see what statistical significances there were. Let's take a look at the data. In total, we looked at 82 points of data for each sighting report, and decided to focus on the sightings reported after version 27 of the app went live. We noticed major changes in spawning algorithms after this update, so we wanted to keep things current. The SILF research team performed a logistical regression analysis to see which factors were significantly correlated to any of the 17 Pokemon types present in Pokemon Go. We learned a few awesome things. Number one, climates. Prior to version 27, we'd seen no conclusive evidence that anything but possibly water types were actually influenced by climate. Fortunately, we now have evidence of large region climate-based spawning. The clearest group that illustrates this is a group of types we see sharing interesting correlations. Ground, rock, fire, and fighting types. These types all had significant correlations with temperature, humidity, cloud cover, clear weather, and wind. Now remember that these factors are not necessarily causing spawns, only correlating with them, but it's safe to infer from these correlations that deserts and other dry climates are now seeing different mons from their cooler, more humid counterparts on a large scale. Fortunately, we also have tons of anecdotal evidence that this is the case from our self-researchers around the globe. We're glad to finally see climate taking a role in spawn mechanics. The second conclusion that we can draw from the data is that local terrain affects spawning too. It's not just large regions and climates affecting spawns, even the features in your neighborhood terrain will change what you encounter. The strongest example of this that we're able to statistically confirm with 95% confidence is with water types. Water types are now confirmed to be strongly positively correlated with riverbanks, wetlands, saltwater beaches, canals, docks, and parks with water features like ponds. Riverbanks were by far the most strongly correlated, while lakes, streams, and dams were much weaker. So, travelers, it's not just confirmation bias. You really can't expect to see water-type mons near rivers and other water features now. There are many other variables affecting Pokemon spawn types besides proximity to water. For example, 40% of spawns on golf courses were grass-type, well above grass-type's typical occurrence at 5% of global spawns. We have a lot of research left to do to decode what points of interest or local terrain features cause different spawns. This leads us to point number three. With this data, we're able to examine a few of the myths that have been floating around the community to see if they hold water. One popular idea is that rain or thunderstorm conditions might have an effect on current spawns. While we'd personally love to see this, we unfortunately did not see any correlation between rain and any spawning changes. We continue to receive anecdotal evidence of this, though. But sighting reports in the rain are not common, so it's difficult to get enough data to prove or disprove this myth. Another favorite myth we hear in the community is that ghost types might spawn in cemeteries. It seems Niantic has made the respectful choice to abstain from using real-life cemeteries as spawn factors, as exactly 0% of spawns reported in or near cemeteries are ghost type. Anyway, now that we know large climates, local terrain features, and points of interest are all playing an active role in spawn mechanics, let's take a look at some of our best guesses for the terrain types according to Niantic. We're seeing groups of species frequently spawning in areas with similar characteristics. Using these, we may be able to back into some reasonable terrain labels. For example, we see this group of rock, ground, fighting, and fire types together commonly in dry desert climates. We might label that terrain desert. We also see a group of grass and bug types together frequently in grasslands or forest. We might call that terrain forest. And finally, we see water mons spawning in the coastal regions, not just right up against the coast. These cities and areas can commonly include various different species of water types. There is so much more to learn about the terrain types that Niantic seems to be employing, as well as why different species spawn where they do. But we want to give a huge shout out to our SILF researchers who've dedicated so much time and energy in hunting down and reporting spawns. They've already enabled us to study spawns from all over the world and bring you guys this awesome data.
So, Moots, tell us what uh, is going on here. Uh, well, what we have here is a, um, an electronic abundance of dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, it occurred when gravity overtook uh, the electronic object. When you dropped your phone in the stream. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I dropped my phone in the river. And it's drying on a rock. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's going to be fine. We were supposed to film with that phone. It's going to be fine. So, spawning mechanics have been changing over time, but seemingly for the better. We're excited to see where they keep going. So make sure you guys like this video and subscribe, because we're going to be bringing you more analysis in the coming days about everything we found out about the beta, and in the future, everything we find out about the game. We'll see you on the road.